You're just honestly hoping for a miracle. You're hoping that when he opens his eyes that he's that same little boy he was before. <laughs> My name is Cassie, and I'm Benjamin's mom. My name is Dominic, I'm from Regina, and I'm Ben's dad. Benjamin is that kid that's friends with everybody, right? He just, he, he has one of those addictive personalities where people just love him. When they first meet him, they just, they want to be his friend. They want to hang out with him. He makes people laugh. He's kind of a class clown in his own way but he's that kid that everybody loves and everybody wants to be friends with. It was a normal morning and the kids just walked to the bus stop as they did uh, most mornings. One of the, the older kids, they saw a truck and it was just kind of driving all sporadic and it was hitting vehicles and, it, and she yelled at all the other kids to get out of the way. Um, all the kids were able to get out except for Ben. I had been at work for probably 40 minutes and then I get a call from Cass, which I mean is not unusual. This one was a little bit weird because I answered the phone and the first things out of her mouth are, you need to come home right now. And so my first thought is, that's weird, that's all I got. And then she hung up the phone. So immediately I'm like, something must be wrong. So I'm calling her and calling her, called her a couple of times. She calls me back and says, Ben was hit. You need to come home right now. When we got to the hospital, the um they rushed him into the trauma room and the first thing that I remember them doing was hooking up the ventilator. They were stitching the top of his head and his leg as they were both um, cut open. Uh, while we were in the, the emergency in Regina, they told us that it was in Ben's best interest and that we should go to Saskatoon in the children's hospital. Um, I was really hesitant to go. But when we got there, I knew it was the place that he was supposed to be. And uh, once we got there and he was through emergency and in the PICU, that's when we had a better idea of uh, Benjamin's injuries. He had the humerus fracture, the femur fracture. He had a broken sternum and pelvis on the left side of his cranium it was fractured. He had contusions in his lungs. There was some swelling in his brain. They were really just concerned about his neck at that point. You start to get the what ifs and then you start to think to yourself, why didn't I stay home from work that day? Why didn't I drive him rather than have him wait for the bus? Then you start to go to the dark place. Well, what if he doesn't make it, right? What if, what is the worst case scenario? Is he gonna be okay? He was in the coma for about seven days um, and at that point they decided it was it was best to take the ventilator out he was he was breathing on his own and he was he was starting to heal and he was getting stronger every day um, when when he when he woke up he he was scared but he knew who we were and that was a really big relief that he was there still. When we um, first got to the hospital, they really couldn't tell us how long he would be in the PICU or how long he would be needing care of any kind of way. They did tell us it would be a long road and we would be in the hospital for a while. Um, there was talk that he wouldn't start school on time um, and it would be later down the, down the road, but um, Benjamin just amazed us all and he, we were out of the PICU within I think nine days and um, then spent maybe three more weeks in hospital before he was allowed to come home. Those nurses are, they were, they were special. I, I can't even imagine how difficult their job is mm -hmm. seeing what they see day in and day out, but just knowing that they were there and just, it genuinely felt like they cared for Ben. It's like he they did, knew him. Yeah, it, it felt like he was almost a part of their family, right? He was more than a patient. It felt like they just genuinely wanted the best for him and for us. It was just so like miraculous at how well he did and how, like how well he is still doing. He's walking without any type of aids. He's running. He's, he's just doing so well. The feeling was that it was going to be months. Month minimum, but months was kind of the feeling that we got. Benjamin's normal right now is similar to what it was prior to the accident. Right? He's going to school every day, 
He's still limited on sports. Yes, there's still appointments. I mean, for him right now, just because of the level of care we received, we might only end up with a couple of scars to show for this, and that's it. As of now, the prognosis is he should be able to live the normal life he would have had prior to the accident. It's important to have a children's hospital in Saskatchewan because you never know when you're going to need it. Saskatchewan, as a province, it seems to be a pretty tight-knit community. So even if it's not yourself that's going to use the hospital, there's more than likely somebody that you know or somebody that they know that at some point in their lives will need that hospital. You're not donating to the hospital. You're donating for people, specifically children, to get their lives back and to get their childhood back and to, to be better and to, to be okay and to be closer to their families. Had there not been the Jim Patterson Hospital in Saskatchewan, I don't know if Ben would be alive right now. I don't know if he would be the same little boy, bright light that he was prior to the incident. The level of care that we received was amazing. It was constant. We were getting updates and I, I honestly don't know, had we not had the hospital here, if Ben would still be a part of our lives.